with us in the studio for more on this. Now, Prof, thank you so much for joining us. What do you make of the div divisions within the ANC to date? Well, I think it's becoming more and more pronounced. Uh, we've seen it this weekend with the Eastern Cape in the mm -hmm. last two weeks. It's about the, the KwaZulu-Natal. We hear about other provinces, maybe even the Northern Cape. Uh, the Western Cape we've seen in the past also. So it, I think the, the big difference between now and previous years is, is that the, the, the divisions, the polarization, mm -hmm. I think it's much more it, deeper than in the past. In the past, you could say almost it's a splinter group within the ANC. It is a sort of dissidence within the ANC. Mm -hmm. Now it is really almost this, this, the, the division, the fault line is almost right in the middle in the ANC. And that makes it that the ANC top leadership cannot deal with those persons now as sort of in a disciplinary way because mm -hmm. it's actually a major political part of the ANC that's involved in this. Mm -hmm. And I think this is why we are seeing now more first with KwaZulu-Natal and I guess we are going to see it with the Eastern Cape also, that it cannot be dealt with by the courts. Mm. The ANC don't, at least don't want to take it to the courts because then it's out of their control and they want to take it more, approach it more from a political point of view. Mm. And I think the, the only way in which they can deal with it is that if they can bring the, the group somehow closer to each other again. Mm. Now, just uh, touching on what you just said now and uh, having seen some of the footage and, and watching um, uh, Deputy President so Ramaphosa addressing um, the Eastern Cape delegates mm -hmm. at the conference and mm -hmm. stating the fact that they don't want to see their issues or, or um, members running to the courts. Mm -hmm. And then this morning um, with uh, Judge, uh, I think, Belinda, uh, striking that, uh, that, that, that interdict or um, that case off the roll, and, yes. but also leaving an issue of, um, I think she, her words were uh, legality, yeah. where there's a possibility that yeah. they can still approach the court. Take us through that, explain that to us. Yeah, well, first of all, I think this application of this morning is behind time, really, because mm. it was interdict in order to stop the conference. The conference you know, from that taking stopped, place, uh, yes. Sunday already, so mm. it became, as some call it, actually academic. Mm. But part of the, the pronouncement by the judge was that you said it, there is the possibility that the process that was followed uh, and the outcome of the provincial conference can be taken on review. Mm. Now that's quite similar to what happened in the case of the KwaZulu-Natal provincial conference of 2015 um, and in even some other cases in 2012, for example, in the Free State. Mm. So there, there is a precedent for it, but I think this is now so close to the national conference of the ANC, it's just two months from now almost, mm. um, that the ANC feels they cannot afford it because the possible consequences will be out, out of their control. They cannot control it anymore. Mm. Um, and they, for them it will be much more beneficial in order if they can bring together the, the different parties, mm. form some form of, I won't say compromise, but some, create some middle position in which they tries to pull in all the different views instead of getting close to the national conference, mm. then something similar to this happens. And then there is the risk um, that the national conference will be postponed or that it is interdicted or it cannot continue. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main point that they want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go, let's go to, to um, Guazulu Natal. The elective conference, the provincial elective conference, took place in 2015. And now this was taken to the courts in 2017. And uh, just going back to the Eastern Cape yesterday, where the deputy president mentioned the fact that they, as the leadership, left it for too yes. long without yes. dealing with the issues. Yes. Do you think presently they will find um, um, common ground or there will be solutions coming um, from the KZN? Because now looking at the KZN, then moving forward to, um, mm. you mentioned the Northern Cape where there was also issues. I think uh, the Northwest there's also issues yes. and the Eastern Cape. Yes. Are they going to be, have solutions, as you say, yes. to avoid the December elective conference being postponed? Well, it becomes now a question of negotiation. It mm. becomes a question of strategy, of, of negotiation, bargaining strategy, of mm. how ultimately they are going to convince each other. Because the ultimate point is, when it comes to negotiations, the typical explanation is that there must be a mutually hurting stalemate. Both mm. sides must be hurt by the, by the current situation. Mm. And that will motivate to come to, come to an, an agreement. Mm. 
I'm not sure whether they are already there, but they will quite soon, I, I guess, reach that stage where they will know that it is in the, it's in the interest of both sides that they've reached that point. Mm. Because you know, the, it is almost like playing a game of poker or so, mm -hmm. where the, the, the current way in which the ANC's uh, nomination process and the election process is what we call in political science a zero-sum conflict. Mm -hmm. It's that the one side wins everything and the other side loses everything. Mm -hmm. So now the question for any delegate or any senior person in the ANC, they must make a guess. Which side are they going to support? And mm -hmm. it can be either a winning side or they can lose. And I think the solution for the ANC in general in order to avoid situations like that is to take that risk away. Mm. So it becomes support for an individual candidate, whether it is as president or deputy president or secretary general, but not for a complete team of candidates, mm. a list of candidates, because then the risk is just so much higher that mm. you can miscalculate. Mm. And I think that's the way, and because there is the risk of miscalculation, therefore the stakes are so high. And that is why we see the violence and even assassinations mm. in places like KwaZulu mm, Natal. Natal. Now, Prof, let's just try and find out what exactly are the root causes of, of uh, the infighting and the divisions within the ruling party? Well, I, I guess one should go back to 2005, maybe Polokwane 2007, mm -hmm. where the rules of the game became, as I try to explain now, because mm -hmm. where it is mutually exclusive. The one side wins and the other side loses. Then the, the losing side is in the political wilderness, so the stakes are exceptionally high. Mm -hmm. Together with being now the winner, we see all the matters of personal gain, of personal interest that become... So, again, the... the the competition for those positions are more than just a political position. It's something which is almost like for the survival of self, some persons. And because mm -hmm. those interests are so high, therefore the competition has become so cutthroat. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is what the ANC in future will have to downscale, that it is not such an absolute life or death decision when it comes to this, uh, uh, elections mm -hmm. like these. Mm -hmm. But Prof, why do you think the eruption is taking place with all the, within all the different uh, provinces just uh, it's literally two months before the elective conference is supposed to take place? Why now? Because the nomination process just started. The, the branch uh, general meetings must be out in the next number of weeks. Their delegates must be uh, identified to will go to the national conference. So all the important decisions mm. in the run-up to the national conference are going to happen in the next week or few weeks. Mm -hmm. And so it's all concentrated now in this period. And I think this is why it has become so intense and so, so, uh, so highly contested um, that there is, and because, as I said, the fact that there's, I also almost want to call that there's no power sharing within the ANC. I know mm -hmm. it's a foreign concept in for an internal party situation, but I think this is the way in which they will have to approach it, is that they, not only one side monopolizes all power in the, other, in the ANC and the other nothing, but that there must be some form of sharing it ultimately. Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, let's go back to the issue of the Eastern Cape and, uh, <coughs> I beg your pardon, now how um, the structures have changed and uh, the Premier is no longer the chairperson of the province within the African National Congress. We've seen um, um, two centres of power in the Gauteng province and it seems to be working in the Gauteng province. Yeah. Now, looking at the Eastern Cape, those dynamics, and having seen the visuals from um, the conference that took yeah. place and people, about 28 people being injured and, and you know, uh, the walkout by um, the other a group of people not wanting to be a part of um, um, the, the conference uh, over the weekend and the interdicts and things like that. Are we likely to see um, that sort of power sharing or could there be changes in the, in the Eastern Cape? And just bearing in mind the fact that they, they are going to be, they're planning to sit down um, the two sides on Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's for me the good sign. And it mm -hmm. is almost similar to what they try to do in KwaZulu-Natal. Mm -hmm. So they want to, again, as I said, try to keep it away from the, the court process, mm -hmm. uh, which is, again, there's a winner and a loser. Um, and this is, I think they have given us all an indication that they want to negotiate, they want to come to some form of agreement, which is maybe not a compromise, but which tries to take out 
this polarized nature of the current situation. Mm -hmm. um, so that there is not a sense that, or that risk, that closer to the national uh, conference, one of the sides will go to court and then try to, to intervene. That it doesn't, mm -hmm. because that is the ultimate place of decision making will be in December. So I, I'm quite, from a, for the ANC sake, quite hopeful that they might reach some form of agreement over time. Mm -hmm. I think there's one negative aspect of it, and that's what we saw with KwaZulu Natal, and that is that uh, the provincial executive took it on appeal already, mm. while the national executive still was sort of considering it, mm -hmm. and they haven't made yet a, a final sort of judgment on what should be done. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the negative signs, but on the other hand, I think the fact that the, the, the national leadership of the ANC wants to, to, to to start with a dialogue between the different groups and bring them closer together. Mm -hmm. That from an ANC point of view, I think is the only way forward mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. But now just looking, at, uh, staying with KZN, why do you think they took so long to, to take action um, on that uh, PEC and, and dealing with those issues? And uh, you know, from the, yeah. the, the two sides, the, the faction that has gone to the court and uh, the current PEC or so to speak, mm -hmm. right now who is the PEC in, 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 in KZN? Yes, I, I think one of the explanations, maybe not the only one, but mm. one of it is, is that was the that regional election in Itokwini, mm. which happened about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And there exactly the same happened as what happened over the weekend in, in, in East, in mm. East mm. London. Okay. Mm. Um, and I think once the provincial leadership saw what happened in Itokwini, then they realized that there was a sort of a, a new dynamics within, within the province, mm. which is dividing the province. And what is, is more significant even is like, for example, the 2015 election, mm. uh, provincial election, was divided 52-48%. So it's almost right in the middle right of the division. The mm -hmm. And I think this is the, the new dynamics which we are seeing which didn't exist in the past is normally there was a big majority and a small minority. Now it is divisions which are 50-50 divisions. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tried to say in the beginning is that that creates an, a new sort of dynamics within the ANC which has never existed in the past. You know, with Polokwane, for example, President Zuma won with a 60-40 split. Um, in at uh, Mangaungi won with a 70-30 split mm -mm. against the, the deputy president Khalema uh, Motlanti. Mm. Now it looks like 50-50. Mm. And because no one is completely now in control of the ANC, there's almost a stalemate b within the ANC. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, the key complications at the moment, is that no one can take final decision within the ANC. And because of that stalemate, it means that there must be some form of dialogue or negotiation in order just to, to bring the ANC together. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's almost two ANCs standing next to each other at the moment. Mm -hmm. Something um, um, uh, very interesting, you, you, earlier on you mentioned the fact that until um, both sides or the parties that are fighting um, feel the hurt, now, I, I need to just take you to the Eastern Cape where I think one of the speakers, if I'm not mistaken, was a spokesperson of the African National Congress, spoke about, mentioned the fact that when um, Oar Tambo handed over the leadership or the, ba the baton um, of uh, the African National Congress, mm. um, I think it was in 1990 or 1991, I could be mistaken, um, but when he handed over, he, he said to um, the leadership at the time that I'm giving you, I'm handing, we're handing over this uh, organization mm. and it is strong and it is powerful and you need to continue with that legacy, grow and develop it. Mm. Do you think when you, when you speak of the hurt um, that the factions need, may have to feel, is this what you are maybe referring back to, that the, 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 the legacy of the African National Congress, of the organization, that people must start feeling that hurt to start working together to ensure that they move forward as an organization, as one unity instead of the different factions? Yeah, I, I think you, you are very good, correct with that. And I think why, where the hurt started mm. to, to some extent was last year with the local government election, mm. where they lost the metros. And it was so dramatic. I mean, I thought never in my lifetime I will see that happen. Mm. Um, and we have seen it not only with one metro, but with three. Mm. And I think that that led the ANC to an introspection 
which many many ANC groups, for example, here in Gauteng, mm. really understood what are the implications of what is happening here. Mm. Um, and I think what we are seeing now is in a sense that there's a, like for example, the ANC stalwarts or veterans. Mm. You know, mm. It's another symptom of that understanding of what is really happening within the ANC mm. um, and to what extent they are sacrificing something mm. that has been built up over a very long period. Interestingly, I would say the ANC was at its height at the election of 2004. Mm -hmm. That would, then they were almost at 70%. Mm -hmm. And since the election of 2009 under President Zuma, the, the, the decline started. Mm -hmm. So it's not something which just happened in the last five years or so. It is something with quite a long history already. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the ANC just cannot turn around that, that, that trend or that tendency. Now, Prof, very quickly, we, are, we have unfortunately run out of time, but in terms of the divisions affecting um, the mm. ANC support base, what are we likely to see happening? Well, that's the million rand question, I guess. Um, at this stage, there's, there's sort of early signs in terms of opinion polls that the ANC is, is losing significantly, especially in the urban areas. Mm. As I said, we've seen it last year with the local, the local government elections. election mm -hmm. already. Like, for example, in Gauteng, they are below the 50% mark if we uh, uh, add on all the, elect uh, the, the votes. Um, and I, I, I think what... What is going to depend, despite the f that many people say this is not the critical factor, but for me, the national conference is going to be the critical factor, the critical moment. Mm. Whether there's going to be a new leadership with a new vision or with a turnaround strategy, if you want to use that concept, or whether it is something which is just continuation of the status quo. Mm. And for me, that, that's going to determine whether the ANC in 2019 will have, still have a future or not. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, is the, elective cons the December elective conference going to take place? I think so. I think so because, you know, as I said earlier on, in my view, there's a, there's a stalemate in the ANC. Mm. There's no one who can <coughs> control the ANC and take that decision anymore. And mm. I think there are, there are almost at least half of the ANC who wants it in December. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because that, of that, and because it will be otherwise in reflection on the ANC itself, mm. you know, that, the, that they are actually in crisis mode. And I think that is what they still deny, that they, are, that they cannot deal with the current situation. So that is for them, therefore, exceptionally important that the conference is held on time. Mm. Prof, we'll have to leave it there for now. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us. And uh, that was political analyst Professor Dirk Gotter joining us live. Time now for a quick break. More news when we return.